So to kick this video off, let me share with you maybe a, a little bit of an eye-opening fact. Did you know that it's been almost two years to the day since we have had a new GPU architecture launch into the gaming laptop market? That's right, the RTX 4000 series has essentially been around for two full years. And 2025, that's gonna change a bunch of things. It's because Nvidia is launching the RTX 5000 series laptop GPUs. And not only that, those things will be available right alongside brand new CPU architectures from both AMD and Intel. Now, what I wanted to do is sort of sum things up here about what these combinations really mean for the 2025 gaming laptop market, basically devices like this, and how things are evolving because it's about to get very, very interesting. Basically, manufacturers are throwing everything they've possibly got at these new designs. New screens, bigger cooling technology upgrades, better keyboards, a bunch of 18 inch models. The list just keeps on going on and on. Everything we've been waiting for and some things that we didn't even know we needed are coming in these new devices. And I mean, we have to start with the RTX 5000 series because that will be basically the heart of any new gaming laptop. And in a lot of ways, this is a massive step beyond what the RTX 4000 series was ever able to offer. I'm not just talking about necessarily performance here, but from a tech and features perspective, this Blackwell architecture that's inside of the RTX 5000 series is going to be a significant step forward. So while core counts, yes, they have generally gone up, in some cases, it might not be as much as you may have thought initially. Also, Nvidia hasn't really detailed core or memory frequencies on these new chips at least not on the laptop side. Either way, we're also seeing some increases in overall memory size, a move to GDDR7, and for the 5080 at least, a wider interface too. And that's so important when you consider a lot of the flagship gaming laptops that use the 5090 and 5080 will be moving to high refresh rate 4K displays this year. We're also getting an RTX 5070 Ti where there weren't any Ti class cards in the 4000 series. But speaking of memory, there's some interesting things going on here. Like the RTX RTX 5090 uses what's essentially a desktop 5080 core, but it gets 24 gigs of memory. Meanwhile, on the desktop side, it only gets 16 gigs. It's also so disappointing to see the 5070 sticking to an 8 gig, 128 bit interface, when most, if not all laptops it'll be used in will have 1600p displays. So higher resolutions where that kind of memory layout could provide a massive bottleneck in some cases. There's another thing that should jump out at you, and that's the RTX 5070. Other than the GDDR7, it is a literal carbon copy of the RTX 4070, at least in terms of CUDA cores. And you might have also noticed that there's a pretty gaping hole in NVIDIA's current RTX 5000 series lineup because they have absolutely no replacements, at least right now, for the RTX 4060 or 4050. That means, at least initially, anybody who doesn't want to spend like $2,000 or more on a brand new gaming laptop, they might have to sit out purchasing for a little while longer. Also, as a result of all of these architecture changes, the RTX 5000 series of starting power has been raised by, in some cases, a substantial amount versus the RTX 4000 series. Though you might remember, laptop GPUs have completely configurable power levels between that bare minimum spec and the maximum value. But what this doesn't show is if there's a TDP headroom, all of these RTX 5000 series cards can essentially steal some of the overhead from the CPU and suck back a bit more power. It all depends how laptop manufacturers handle things like cooling, power, and temperatures on individual models. For example, the new revised G16 that's coming out this year with its 5090, it will be running that GPU at a maximum of 130 watts. That's because ASUS's engineers, they figured that is the maximum they could cram into here, have it suck back while still delivering adequate temperatures and noise levels. On the other hand, we also got some time recently with the 2025 version of the Strix Scar 16 and 18. Those laptops feature a brand new heatsink with triple fans, a massive vapor chamber, and liquid metal. That combination allows their RTX 5090s to hit a maximum of 175 watts with dynamic boost, while the CPU itself can get up to 65 watts. Meanwhile, the MSI Titan 18HX also allows the RTX 1590 to flex upwards to 175 
25 watts. But MSI was also able to push CPU power to a constant 95 watts at the same time. And that's one of the reasons the 2025 laptops will be so overall crazy. With new GPUs and CPUs, most manufacturers have finally updated their internals to the latest and greatest in cooling tech. That should lead to cooler temperatures, more consistent performance, and hopefully quieter running gaming laptops. Anyways, we're gonna sort of shift gears here a little bit because I wanted to talk about the CPUs that these RTX 5000 series GPUs are most likely to be paired up with. And of course, the most logical answer is the Ryzen 9000 HX series, which is technically called Fire Range, since it'll probably be the gaming king this time around, and by a pretty wide margin too, especially that X3D chip. But in general, based on what we know about Zen 5 on the desktop side, Intel will probably face a pretty big uphill battle in the gaming laptop market too. There's also been a little bit of talk about something called the Ryzen 8000 HX series. Now we don't have official feeds and speeds about this quite yet, but it looks like this will take over I guess AMD's more mid-level to budget-focused gaming laptop lineup. It's basically a rebranded Ryzen 7045HX lineup, but we're just gonna have to see how this shakes out and what kind of laptops it's actually gonna be used in. Meanwhile, the Ryzen AI lineup will also feature pretty heavily into this equation, since it's rapidly becoming the go-to architecture for thinner and lighter gaming laptops, whereas the higher-end processors mostly focus on desktop replacement systems. Meanwhile, Intel's Arrow Lake architecture is making its way to the gaming and creator laptop side with a pretty wide range of HX series options, none of which have hyperthreading enabled. They range from 14 to 24 cores and threads with power limbs that are basically identical to the 14th gen CPUs they replace. Also, based on what we've seen, the Ultra 9 275HX will be the one you'll most likely see in most RTX 5000 series laptops. Meanwhile, there's also the standard H series that should be rolled into more entry level devices along with some thin and light gaming laptops too since these CPUs are meant to run at slightly lower power limits than the HX series. Plus, they get some LPE cores thrown in too. Anyways, the reason why I'm bringing processors into this conversation is because when I started looking at the spec sheets for these new laptops from ASUS, Razer, MSI, and a few others, I noticed this weird trend developing when it came to the utilization between AMD and Intel processors. Now, before I get too far into this, I don't wanna start any conspiracy theories here, okay? I am just going to lay out the facts as they are right now. First of all, there are very few laptops from major manufacturers that combine an RTX 5090 with the most logical CPU choice, a 9950HX3D or 9950HX. There are a few exceptions though, but those are mostly from smaller brands, but there might also be the MSI Raider A18. Now, right now I'm saying it might be simply because we've had some feedback saying the RTX 5090 version may not actually happen, but I'm crossing my fingers that it actually does. Anyways, instead of that flagship 5090, most AMD-based laptops typically max out at an RTX 5080, or in the case of Asus's G16, the X3D is matched up with, at most, an RTX 5070 Ti. And look, to a lot of people, that might be sort of like a, a, a nothing burger, but Asus themselves, they set a precedent with the previous generation laptop. The 7945HX3D, which was launched in this thing, the SCAR 17 X3D, well, straight from the get-go, it came with an RTX 4090. So the lack of RTX 5090 option this time around, it just feels off. But despite that, it's not like Nvidia's highest end GPU doesn't get any AMD CPU options. Nope, instead laptops like the Razer Blade 16, by the way, props to Razer for going AMD on this one, and MSI Stealth and Vector series, they've all got it. They've all got the 5090, except they're pairing it with a Ryzen AI9 HX370, likely due to those being, I guess, more compact options. Another thing we're starting to notice is that for the most part, those high-end flagship gaming laptops, the ones where a 5090 makes the most sense, like the 2025 MSI Titan 18 ROG SCAR series, well, they don't get any AMD CPU options whatsoever. As a matter of fact, while the 2025 version of the G16 and 18 gets a brand new design, the AMD version with its 9950X3D option doesn't see any design upgrade whatsoever. It's been the same for the better part of two years. And look, yes, it absolutely feels like there's something going on. 
and I think that there is, but this isn't about some vast conspiracy theory, at least not in my opinion. I think this is about two things. Number one, it's perceived customer preference. Because let's be honest here, even after years and years of AMD having such a competitive laptop CPU lineup, well, a lot of people just don't have the name AMD in their lexicon when it comes to ultra high-end, ultra expensive gaming devices. The other problem that we might be seeing here is that AMD unfortunately has a pretty spotty track record when it comes to supplying volume of their CPUs in a timely manner to laptop manufacturers. So naturally, a lot of laptop manufacturers, they're gonna say, look, we wanna get those Halo devices out there because they have massive prices and probably massive profit margins. So why not go with Intel who can guarantee us a supply from day one? But hopefully at some point, maybe in the near future, there's enough confidence in AMD processors and corresponding supply of them in order for us to see more customer choice in some of these higher end laptops. I wanna be able to go out and buy a Titan 18 with either an AMD or an Intel processor. It's not that hard to ask, but it seems like at least right now, that's not really gonna happen. There is however one, I guess, Intel exclusive for those high-end 2025 laptops, and that's Thunderbolt 5. Whereas AMD devices make do with the still perfectly fast, but a bit less capable USB 4. And yet don't equate every Intel and RTX 5000 series gaming laptop with TB5, because most won't actually get it. Another thing we should start seeing in these 2025 laptops from both AMD and Intel is PCIe Gen 5 SSDs, because this is actually the first time that this has happened, that SSD suppliers and the controllers that they use are not going to be sort of like burning the house down. I mean, do you remember what we saw that year at Computex? It, it was just these towering heat sinks. Well, that's not necessary anymore. There's also a few other trends that you'll see in these 2025 gaming laptops, like a move to 1610 UHD plus 1600p screens on almost every single model as a baseline configuration, which should really make you wonder how those eight gig cards will fare at their native resolutions. Mini LED panels, meanwhile, will also see a lot more use in higher end laptops rather than being reserved for those ultra niche products. And from what we've experienced during hands-on time with a few of these 2025 models over the last few months, well, there's a general push by every single company to improve overall build quality and finally Finally, finally bring their keyboards up to today's standards. Okay, so the last thing I want to touch on here is performance. And unfortunately, I don't really have much for you at this point in time. While Nvidia has divulged a few very choice numbers here and there for the discrete desktop side, it's not the same with the laptop market. And there's probably a simple reason behind that, right? It's because laptop performance from model to model is so variable. It's all dependent on what I said before, power limits, thermals, and a bunch of other factors. So doing A-B testing and A-B comparisons is extremely difficult. But we've had some off the record conversations with a lot of partners about their new designs. And when you combine the CPU upgrades alongside the RTX 5000 series GPUs, they expect new laptops to offer between 25 and 40% better gaming performance than 2024 models while running at identical power levels. There will also be new power saving features rolled out as part of the Max-Q technology stack that should see notebooks with these GPUs get much better overall battery life. So I guess that covers pretty much everything. And this 2025, 2025 is going to be a banging year on the gaming laptop side after what was essentially two years of stagnation. The only thing is that we're going to have to wait a while for it because the new RTX 5000 series is only starting to roll out in March of this year. But until that point, well, we have a lot of re-benchmarking to do. And we will be with you guys along for the ride while we expand our laptop coverage throughout this year. But anyways, until that point, I'm Mike with Hardware Canucks and I will see you in the next one. Have a great day, guys.